I will say this because I say it on every single podcast. If they lock me up for some insane bullshit, Andrew Tate has been arrested. I didn't do it. The Matrix has attacked me. If I carry on with the trajectory I'm carrying on, they're going to put me in jail because I'm too influential. For the people watching at home, they just need to sit and understand that the system does not make rules for the good of you. It makes rules for the good of the people who make the rules. And a lot of the life paths laid out to the average man at home today is not for their own good. It's only going to lead them to depression and misery. Do you think you're a force for good? I absolutely not really know I'm a force for good because I'm a force for truth. And truth is a good thing. Without truth, we're going to end up in absolute tyranny and slavery, and we're already on our way there. I think there's a whole swath of the population, especially young men that feel disenfranchised. I haven't put a magic spell on the world. The fact that people like what I say means that they agree with me deep inside. They may be afraid to say it themselves, but I am seen as a bastion of free speech and a bastion for masculinity as a whole, because a lot of men are largely forgotten about. There's no evidence in my files that there's nothing wrong. Everybody knows I'm innocent. This is a huge injustice the way we see it. They should not be detained at this point. There are not even charges filed against them. People are trying to set him up to look like he's something that he's not. I mean the best for people. I want everyone to be successful. I want the world to be a better place. And I think the world's a better place based on the back of strong men who stand up for what they believe in. I think that's how the world's always been a better place. The Matrix programming says the opposite. They're telling us that to be a better place, all the men need to be weaklings and compassionate without any morals or without any hard lines or beliefs. And they must talk in a very, very uh, soft way. And we need to be very, very compassionate and very, very tolerant and all these things. But if you look at history, the only times things were peaceful and nice is when strong men stood up with their swords and said, no, this is mine and this works this way. No one's going to come fuck with it. I think that masculinity and strength is what makes things beautiful. It's what preserves things. And it's what we need more of. It's what's missing from the world. Masculine men have a duty to provide and protect those they care about. We have a duty to do things we don't feel like doing because we know we're supposed to do them. And it's your duty as a man to stand up and say, I want to be as important and strong and good-hearted and God-fearing as possible. And I need to work hard to achieve those things. If you cannot control your own mind, then you are just a feather in the wind of life because your own mind is the only thing you can control. You can't control the weather. Right. You can't control other people. You can't even control whether your heart stops beating. You might have a heart attack tomorrow. You can't control anything besides what you think. There's no such thing as too much masculinity if it's genuinely masculine. Genuine masculinity is not out here to hurt people. It's absolutely the opposite. It's out here to protect. And when bad things happen, they call traditionally masculine men. If you need a firefighter, you need a masculine man. When you call the police because of the problem you have, you want masculine men. And as soon as a woman or a man is in trouble, when you look for backup, you look for masculine men. And masculine men have a duty to provide and protect those they care about. We have a duty to do things we don't feel like doing because we know we're supposed to do them. And that's why we stayed in the Titanic and died. And the dangerous thing about overly emotional men is that they're dangerous. They're genuinely dangerous. This is what's crazy. All these people who talk about toxic masculinity and how bad it is for men to be traditionally masculine. A traditionally masculine man does things he doesn't feel like doing because it is his duty to do them. He charges into the burning building because it is his duty. Not because he feels like it, because it is his duty. We're now teaching the new generation of men that they don't have duty and they can just act on their feelings and act how they feel and they don't have to act as a man should. Do you know what happens when you get men who just act how they feel? You get school shooters, you get violence, you get rapists. Men who do not control their emotions are dangerous. If you find a man who is stoic, he's not gonna hurt people. He's gonna sit and think about his actions very carefully and he's gonna be a good man who protects for and provides for his family. You find a man who just acts out on impulse and does whatever he feels like, you're gonna find a dangerous man. Sitting here telling men to cry more and act with their feelings and it's okay to feel this way, that way, etc., and have no self-control. That is why we have the problems we have in the world. Absolutely not really wrong. So when they talk about toxic masculinity, they have it completely inversed on its head. Completely not really wrong. We need to be teaching stoicism. We need to be teaching young men to understand that the world is very, very difficult. It's hard to be a man. You're going to feel bad sometimes. You just suck it up and perform anyway. Not to sit there, you cry your eyes out or blame other people. We live in a comfortable world now where people think, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But you know what? To some degree, it does matter. It does matter. And I'm going to tell you who it matters to. It matters to your soul and it matters to God. I stand in the mirror with a pure heart. I know I am the best version of me that could possibly ever exist. I know that God is proud of me. There's nothing that God hates more than sloth and laziness. If God were to create a man and that man were to sit around and do fuck all, God will frown upon you. It's why you're never lucky. If you're listening to this and you think I'm never lucky, I'll tell you why, because God dislikes you because you're fucking lazy. Start to work, start to show God the beauty of his own creations. You'd be amazed how lucky you'll become. Wow. God is unhappy with these people. 
and inside their hearts they're unhappy. We talk about depression, anxiety. That comes from self-loathing. You loathe your own weakness. You loathe your own laziness. This is what all of these things are. I don't feel depression. How can I feel depression when I'm the most powerful version of me that I could ever fucking be? How can I feel depression when I could squeeze my own hand hard enough to break my own bones? How can I feel depression when I've smashed and destroyed 68 people's faces in front of me? Men who thought they could test me in fair combat. How can I feel depressed? It's impossible. Do you understand? Um, you love me. Andrew Tate's one of the most wonderful human beings I've ever met in my life. Mm. I hate everything that's going on. Like, love him with all my heart. Yeah. Like, I'll die on that mountain with you, bro. Yeah. Let's get on that hill. Where's the sword? Why is he the enemy of the state, so to speak? He's going got on? the hearts of young men. Mm-hmm. He's got the hearts of young men. And that's a threat. Yeah. Absolutely. I feel like men nowadays need an Andrew Tate. He's a guy who's motivating men to be men. If you cannot control your own mind, then you go through life with zero control, zero influence. You can't control anything. You're just a feather in the wind waiting for life to blow you from happy place to sad place to happy place to sad place. Completely hoping on the gods to be fortunate to you because if any genuine discomfort comes your way, you're fucked. Because everybody's fucked distracted. They're getting distracted by this, distracted by that, watching fucking Netflix jerking off to porn pub like fucking jackasses. It's so easy to win if you can control your own mind. But it seems that nobody fucking can. And that's how the people who run the world keep the world running. Because they have all the slaves exactly where they need them to be. Permanently distracted and semi-depressed. Working their asses off in jobs which will never satisfy them and never pay enough money. That's the matrix. Hey, Andrew, how do I get like a six pack quick? What's the best, fastest way to get a six pack? Why does it have to be quick? Why does it have to be easy? Why do you think life is all quick and easy? Why can't it be hard and difficult? Why can't you suffer? Because suffering is what gives it value. If everyone had a six pack and it was quick and easy, then it wouldn't be valuable, would it? If everyone walked around with a six pack and they got it easily, then no one would give a shit. The whole point is that it's difficult to get. Value is linked to difficulty. If you want something that is valuable, you need something which is difficult to obtain. The fact that you just said you wanted it quick and easily shows that your whole mental moral is fucked. You shouldn't be thinking about quick and easy. You should be thinking about hard, suffering, pain, going through it. That's what you should be thinking about. This is going to be hard, but I'm going to do it anyway. Because when it is done, then everyone's going to know that I went through something difficult. Why do you want it to be quick and easy? You're Don't right. you understand it how it defeats the your mind is? It defeats your mind is broken. Your mind is broken. I say that life as a man is exceptionally difficult. I say the most beautiful and the most terrifying thing about being a man is you're born without value. Society doesn't care about you. You're only gonna be cared about based on how useful you are. You have the chance to build yourself up and become a superhero if you're prepared to do the hard work and be indefatigable enough to never quit. But if you're gonna stand around and wait for a handout, nobody's gonna ever respect you. I think that the world's never gonna think you're important unless you make yourself important. I think you get to decide what character you wanna be in this movie, which is your life. You can decide if you wanna be a comedian or a musician right. or a fighter, you get to decide what you wanna be. And if you work hard enough, you can become it. It's the denial that's gonna hold you back the most. The people who go, yes, I'm wasting my potential. Those are the ones who have potential. The ones who stand up and go, I am wasting my potential. I could be anything and I am not that yet. They have a chance. This stream actually, like, I'm pretty sure changed, like, lives. I swear to God. Like, you changed lives just now. I hope so.